With Metro Exodus having just recently hit Steam, and the Metro Redux working its way onto the Nintendo Switch later this week, I wanted to take a look at an environment from Metro Exodus, and why I think it's one of the best environments in the whole series. Now I want to talk about the Taiga, the forested region of 2019's Metro Exodus, and how it focuses in on Metro's best mechanics with laser precision. Metro Exodus set itself apart from the previous two games in the series by moving the action of the franchise out of the bombed-out tunnels of Moscow's metro system and out into the open air of Russia's expansive countryside. The plot is divided between these unfamiliar open-air environments and shorter, more traditionally linear subterranean environments, or skeletal cities. Near the third act of the story, the narrative moves into an area known as the Taiga, a verdant region nestled in the shadow of a hydroelectric dam. Compared to the other regions of the game, the Taiga is unique in that it takes the linear navigation of the previous two games and the open-world feeling of Exodus new areas and combines them into the most dynamic environment of Metro Exodus. Now if you haven't played Exodus, here's what you need to know about why you're in the Taiga. The protagonist, Artyom, is attempting to find a new and unirradiated home for him, his wife, and the merry band of comrades they've collected along the way. Artyom and a companion are sent to the taiga to scout the area, and during their scouting expedition are knocked into the river by a landslide. You are fished from the river by a mysterious woman, though all your supplies have been lost, and your companion has been captured. The goal is to get from one end of the valley to the other, where you'll meet back up with your companion at the valley's hydroelectric dam. Now, according to Developer Diaries accessed as part of Exodus New Game Plus mode, the prototype level that would eventually become the Taiga was where the team at 4A tested and refined all the new systems they wanted to include in Exodus. Things like the day-night cycle, how the passage of time would affect NPCs and animals, crafting, and player vehicles all found their roots in the prototype for the Taiga. So it should be no surprise, then, that in Exodus 2017 E3 reveal, the highlighted section of the game bears remarkable resemblance to the town just beyond the Taiga's hydroelectric dam. The implication from the E3 demo was that this area would be much more open world, and this is more or less corroborated in the New Game Plus commentaries where the developers talk about all the different stories that were intended to take place in the Taiga. It was not just the drama of Artyom looking for his lost comrade, but sounds much more like the other open-world environments in Exodus, with numerous unrelated story elements all taking place in the same vast space. So if the Taiga was originally meant to be a much more open-air environment, it's very interesting to look at it now and wonder where the choice was made to make it more linear, or really, a blend of linear and open-world environments. The first time I played through it, I had been distracted by my dog during the cutscene where the mysterious woman Olga drags Artyom out of the river and tells him not to kill any of the forest dwellers, because they're, quote-unquote, just like children. So, not hearing this request, kill I did. And a lot of it. But not because I wanted to, because my enemies gave me no choice. And that somewhat ties into one of my only criticisms of the Metro games. When an enemy becomes alerted to your presence, they do not ever become idle again. They are always alert. Now, I try to avoid combat in the Metro games when possible because one of the defining aspects of the Metro series is a focus on the scarcity of supplies. Ammunition and medical packs are few and far between, or fewer and farther between, depending on your selected difficulty level. But in the Taiga, combat became inevitable. As is the way with best laid plans, I would accidentally stumble into the eyeline of one guard or another, and suddenly the whole camp would be on alert, never to be unalert. But even as the forest dweller's eyes pierced through the woods in an anxious search for my position, I could still get pretty far without engaging the enemy as most of my movements were hidden in the darkness of the night. But eventually, I would again slip up and the forest dwellers would descend on my position. This is when most of the killing occurred. On my first run through the woods, I did not realize how linear the taiga was constructed, and as such, somewhat aimlessly wandered through the shadows of the many scattered campgrounds of the taiga's forest inhabitants, and in my wandering, discovered new paths through the woods. But I was so concerned with staying out of sight during my first run through the taiga, and my progress through the valley so slow and deliberate, that eventually the sun rose, and made my navigation into the valley even more difficult. This is where the killing I'd attempted to avoid, not because of the words of my river savior, but because ammunition and health packs in the Metro games are remarkably scarce, became all but inevitable. There could be no sneaking in sunlight. 
All this resulted in the quote-unquote bad ending for my trip through the taiga. As my companion and I readied ourselves to zip line back to our locomotive home, Olga, my river savior, confronted us over my blatant disregard for her plea for nonviolence. In an attempt to escape, my companion was wounded. Now because I'm one of those people who feels guilty about that kind of stuff, I immediately went back to replay the taiga. Knowing now some of the more secret paths, and fully aware of the moratorium on lethal force, not only was I able to more successfully navigate the gaps and tunnels that wound their way between the enemy encampments, but I discovered even more alternate paths, including one that completely bypassed a whole area of enemies. It was these new discoveries that gave me an even greater appreciation for the design of the taiga, and a greater appreciation still when I arrived at the hydroelectric dam. Olga and her henchmen once again descended on me and my comrade, but because I'd passed through the forest without killing any of her companions, she let us depart in peace. So if you find yourself playing the Metro Redux on Switch this week and enjoy what you're playing, maybe pop in Exodus when you're done. There's some remarkable discoveries to be made there. Hey everybody, this is Jake Terrio with Subpixel. If you've made it this far, hopefully it means you enjoyed that video that you just watched. So if you could leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed already, that lets us and our robot overlords at YouTube know that this video is worth watching. So thank you for that, and we'll see you next time.